Go ahead. My name is Alex Anderson. It's unfortunately largely predicated on slavery, free labor. It is one of the reasons why our economy has such a burgeoning, such a bulging example of prowess because we have a two to four hundred year head start on absolute free, free labor. You can still see all the remnants of that today because we continue to outsource most of our labor on the technical side and then and then ship back the finished product. Free labor is still very much part of our economy. What components do I believe have the most impact to change the current direction of Black America? Consumption. We as an aggregate spend just about $972 billion based upon a census that was done about three and a half to four years ago. If we were to capture in today's economic time, at this present time, 10% of that, that would be $97 billion dollars. The impact to the black community and black financial hold would still be a fraction of the overall economy, but it would aggregate more than our current net worth if we were just to save 10% of what we spend overall. Consumption. We spend way too much. Our public institutions largely support a draconian way of keeping our current state of our current state and ability to grow demonstrably. Public institutions have a service component, which is about cradling and serving as a net, if you will, to keep from people from falling literally to the floor. But that net also serves as a leverage to keep folks from getting above and off of that floor. Now, if you were to move to the institutional side of the educational side, I think it's a very demonstrable conversation that the institutional aspect of education may also be as guilty in the preservation and mindset of keeping people from moving and asking the right questions, which is not to say that education is not important because it is. I'm simply trying to address this. If you were to take all of the beautiful minds of color that come out of the institutions, higher education, and then look against the backdrop of where can they go? Is there an apparatus to, to absorb them all? And their numbers are so few to start with when they have to compete globally. So I recognize that there may need to be something else that is built to be better positioned to help people of color than to put us back into a system that largely will not absorb us and then leave us riddled with a lot of debt trying to change something that was not for us in the first place. There is a movie out right now that's called 12 Years a Slave. And there's a very compelling part in the movie when the slave owner tells a slave to beat another slave or be shot. And the slave in that moment yells to the slave who's been told to beat her, I would rather it be you. The compressing nature of an economy that does not allow true growth, competition, and the spirit of what we call capitalism often shows up in that same very way. You don't necessarily get the best, but you have what that what's that adage called crabs in the barrel, dog eat dog. And in a healthy environment, that doesn't happen. Competition is spurned through natural aggression. Aggression not in the violence sense, aggression in the pushing of better ideas. In our economy, in our communities, we are literally stacked on top of each other, trying to grasp that breath of air that someone else is trying to grasp. So it turns in a very different nature 
and how we actually compete. Now, if you go back to the educational aspect, the institutional side, we tend to thrive across multi layers of disciplines, multi arenas, and facets of background and in industry. But when you're focused and putting this in one aggregate system, the output tends to start to look very simple. I'll give you an example the NFL. You show me as an aggregate against any other business model where 100% of the profit is generated by the employees. The employees have a management system above it as a layer. And then there's an ownership component in terms of who has physical ownership of the team. You show me that on the other side, I'll show you a firm. Whether it be a law firm, a professional services firm, CPAs for example, and or an investment firm. Where you have partners. Partners generate revenue and they all share the risk. And this is where I'm saying from our standpoint, what's happening is we're being pushed down to prey upon each other because we can't necessarily move to the partnership role. And then have a, have a different experience of ownership. This unfortunately is what is starting to re-manifest itself. It's actually, it's never left. And so the state of our economic summary is one that we continue to be played into a system where we cannot have ownership. Rather, we will continue to be the producers of labor and the discard when our labor is no 